Hello everyone! So, first test flight is already behind us. This is going to be our second test flight. It's going to be awesome! Finish, good to see you, Scotty. Good to see you as well. Uh, three black, digital, boom. Hello, guys. Welcome. Thank you for dropping by. Um, so, yes. Um, so, meanwhile, I have been preparing my in-air fl flight test. We've already did a our first flight test yesterday, but it was just a basic traffic pattern. Um, today, I'm planning to do some more sp specialized flight tests. Um, and I was actually in bed with my iPad in the early morning, staying up, um, reading all kinds of documentation on um, flight tests recommended by the FAA for experimental um, or pilots who are working on their experimental aircraft and to do their first test flight. Um, so I have um, prepared quite some maneuvers or some procedures uh, that we can do to further tune our uh, Skyhawk. Uh, also in reference to, to Playmaker. I've got my iPad here nearby where I actually have a much more elaborated description of the stuff that I described in this red sticky note. Three Black, how was the first test flight? It was awesome. It's on YouTube uh, if you are interested or you just look at our uh, past broadcast uh, of yesterday and you can have a look. Uh, it was really, really cool. It was such a special experience that you, you, you build your own aircraft and the thing just flies. Um, Really, really excited uh, still. Uh, also, uh, Mrs. Uncertified had a chance to fly it herself also after the stream, uh, which was also uh, quite special. It was really, really, really nice. And even though we still have a lot of work to do still, um, it was fun. So uh, as you can see here at the top of the progress bar, 22% arbitrary but anyways uh, kind of like 22 percent and we're now in the test flight stage and um, so it's appropriate that we uh, think a little bit more carefully about what the test flight might entail uh, in addition to the one that we did yesterday uh, and then we're going to move in um, move towards all of the 3d modeling and blender and stuff uh, that I, as I well, I'm really repeating myself here but I cannot wait to start with that um, anyways um, I've also been looking at wing mass as best as I can. That's a, also a measure that I could put into Playmaker. I cannot find how heavy a wing is of the Skyhawk. So if anyone knows, please let me know. Uh, I also need to think about what kind of test flight we could do to infer that mass. It's a ratio based off of the total uh, empty uh, weight of the, of the Skyhawk. Um, also, some of you in the yesterday stream referred me to the data ref tool. Pretty awesome. So there's a a plugin, I think. I haven't installed it just yet. That's the only thing where you can more quickly, more efficiently work with data refs or also see what data refs are changing based on what you're doing in, in, in Playmaker while you are flying. Um, I, th I think it was Toto who suggested me to take a look at that. Um, so that's awesome. Just a free source uh, the tool. I will feature that, I guess, in the next stream. And uh, this is actually the main thing. Prepared my in-air uh, flight tests. Um, so what do those entail? Well, first let me, oh, I should have actually downloaded that on my desktop so I can show you guys. Um, there was a, can I do that from my iPad here? Because it was my iPad that I had in my lap while I was doing this. Um, what was that PDF? Well, it was by the FAA, I think. Um, I need to look that up. Um, and the FAA recommends this particular flight test to do. Uh, quite elaborate PDF, uh, just on Google, a basic search. Um, so based off of that documentation, also some other things that I found. Hey, Azen, good to see you. Um, this is where that list comes from. So, um, also music. Um, Double check that it's actually also sounding at your end. Yes. Um, so first thing that we're going to do is reaffirm, redo a basic traffic pattern with our Skyhawk. So we know that it was not just coincidence that we uh, that it was flying correctly. I'm not expecting that it will be so. It's also good for me just to again get used to the joystick and get uh, into the cockpit. Then what we're going to do is cruise. Uh, let me see, 5,000 feet or so. Um, just to see how the engine is performing, leaning and stuff, uh, oil temperature. Um, so a more careful look at what the engine is doing while we are flying. In my previous test run, 
I was just basically having fun, uh, making a basic traffic pattern, but now we're gonna really delve a little bit more deeper in what the uh, aircraft is showing us. Um, then, um, straight and level flight. This is really interesting. So there are different stabilities to an aircraft. Now, if you have an experimental aircraft, you've designed your own, um, then you need to develop an understanding of what your stall speeds are, your best climb speeds, because no one knows, right? It's a new airplane, or a pretty new type, or something like that. Now, in our case, we are, we're modeling the 172SP. We already know what the thing should fly like, right? So it's a slightly different kind of approach. So we know that the aircraft should have some kind of stability. Now, there are different kinds of stabilities that an aircraft can have. A longitudinal stability and a short period and a long period. One longitudinal is the pitch axis. Um, and you can give a short pitch change and there should be a short oscillation in, in the aircraft. I don't know if X-Plane actually simulates that, we'll have to see. There's also a long period one. So if we just pitch up the airplane and we let go of the controls, over time, through a few oscillations, the aircraft should get back to straight and level flight in standard conditions, no winds and stuff. Well, that's something that we can test and I think that that should work uh, in X-Plane. We also have lateral uh, stability. Now let me know, let me just have a closer look because it suggests something that in my mind was, let me see. Um, yes, that's a maximum forward slip in cruise. So like we are descending onto the runway, a forward slip. So with rudder and aileron input. Um, and then we release the aileron to see if then the lower wing actually rises uh, because we still have rudder input. Um, so that's a check that we can uh, that we can do. Uh, we also have static directional stability, um, which is just using slow rudder and uh, slow rudder input, so to left and to the right, um, and to uh, just a little bit of aileron to keep uh, the, the wings level. Um, and then we um, we release the rudders to see if the airplane still has some stability, keeping straight. Um, very interesting. I think that it will just be fine because we based again our model on the real Cessna Skyhawk. Um, so yeah, there's also one spiral stability. Um, that's a bank, banking 20 degrees. Uh, then release the controls and to see if the plane then recovers again to straight and level um, or level evil straight flight. Um, interesting. Um, the idea though is these are nice procedures, uh, but if our Skyhawk behaves a little bit off of, of what we would expect to see happening, then things become quite complex because then what variable do we need to change, right? So this is interesting stuff also for me to familiarize myself with what it feels like to fly these things and to see how our um, the Skyhawk uh, responds, but then how to fix it or optimize it. That's an, an entirely different story. So um, we'll have to see. Hey, Agent, good to see you. Martin, good to see you as well. When yesterday, since I couldn't be there, well, life testing is better, right? That's true, Martin. Welcome. Um, then slow flight, obviously, also to see how the controls, how they are doing, whether they are too aggressive or not. I, I'm not sure what kind of variables we can change in Playmaker to fix that. Stall speeds, advanced stalls, so stalling in a bank. Um, drag, so when we, like we did with the high-speed taxi or the taxi test in the yesterday stream when we put a, we have a particular taxi speed, 20 knots or so, and we go idle, how much time does it take the Skyhawk to slow down until it's uh, stationary, right? Until it's stopped. Uh, well, the same goes for flying. Uh, when we are in, in cruise and uh, we uh, put our throttle to idle, how fast or how slow is the Cessna going to slow down? Uh, is that realistic or not? Um, also with flaps on. Um, and so again, we need to do a lot of, um, there, there are some numbers in Playmaker there that, that show you the drag component of flaps, but also of the wings and stuff. Um, so here, Airfoil Maker might come uh, into play. Uh, high G load uh, turns, uh, wing flex, uh, also the surface ceiling te uh, test. So we go up to 18,000 feet to st see if that thing still flies. And also if we go any higher than what the manual shows, if we also notice that the Skyhawk is unable to stay at that altitude, um, at that density altitude. So um, important tests. Uh, climb performance, VY and VX, we can approximate. Um, 
based on some procedures, really interesting to, to see what we can do to, uh, to, to test the aircraft performance. But again, if these are off, and chances are that our Skyhawk is a bit off of the uh, numbers here, how do we fix those? So that requires, like Rush was saying as well, uh, Aerosim Gaming uh, a while ago on stream, yeah, that just requires a intuitive, proper understanding of aerodynamics. Uh, it's just experience, uh, change numbers, see what they do. Um, so um, it's gonna be, to some extent, also some trial and error kind of exercise here. And uh, we're gonna take a little bit more time, I think, than I initially thought with test flying. So there's definitely gonna take a couple of streams. Um, also for me, just to have some time to study what we're actually doing. Um, so these are just the, the, the particular flights or maneuvers that we're gonna do, but they don't mean anything if we don't know how we can then evaluate or optimize our, our flight model. Um, descent performance as well, glide, best glide speed, for example. Then the performance tables, that's only, look at this, stuff that we can do already before we come to the uh, performance tables and we can look at the fuel burn and stuff and different weights. Also with the landing to see how the wings are wiggling when we land, that's also something that we can set in Plane Maker. Um, then weight and balance checks. Uh, also interesting, we need to do all this stuff once more. So we do this with default CG and basic average kind of load uh, in the airplane. Uh, but then we're also gonna do those same tests with minimum and maximum gross weight, um, but also in combination with forward and aft CG. Um, and hoping that our plane is still able to fly. A little bit more difficult, I guess, or a little bit different than usual, but uh, it's important. Um, Takeoff and landing distance, if that corresponds, again, tells us something about the friction of the wheels. Um, interesting, obviously, that should be added as well. Uh, crosswind test, uh, I invented that myself, I put that here. I'm just curious to see how it handles. Um, I expect that it would be fine if this is all fine, but then uh, we have to see. Um, and last, lastly, um, also do, well, perhaps not all of these tests here, but also really need to do a flight in my flight sim as well with my yoke and my rudders, because now I'm doing this with a, with a joystick. Um, but obviously that has an entirely different feel than my yoke. Um, so we're also going to export that thing to, uh, to my computer next to me here. Uh, and we're going to do a proper flight, uh, perhaps even on, uh, no. I guess that would be quite difficult with such a 2D panel. It, it can be done, obviously, but uh, we just do um, a basic flight there. So that's the current scheme of things, uh, I think. Um, so what we're gonna do is first a basic traffic pattern, again, with our Skyhawk to see how it does. Um, I'm also curious here to see if that weird RPM idle shutdown behavior is gone. So some of you suggested, uh, let me see. First we have Playmaker here, and I have explained in my other desktop space. Yes. Um, suggested that the reload current aircraft option in the menu is actually a little bit buggy, and it uh, gives weird RPM behavior, the one that I'm noticing as well. So in this case, now because we are loading up our Skyhawk, um, from scratch at Cochrane. Um, let's see if that behavior doesn't show. If it does show, then I was thinking that perhaps. So what was happening when I'm when I'm setting idle, idle throttle. Uh, let me see. So the sound is a bit. Oh, that's good. If the sound is too loud, guys, let me know. Um, if I go throttle idle in our current build, then very slowly the um, um, the, idle, the the engine stops. We get really weird kind of low RPM, and well, that doesn't necessarily surprise me. Let me see what I just did. Wires here go all over the place. A bit more tidy. Uh, yes, can we go down? Yeah, we can. Um, when we go idle in our current build, then we, well, the RPM drops down, and uh, you could say, well, 
with a Skyhawk or with a prop, you shouldn't go idle always. A little bit a little bit of a throttle there. But I know also from the real world, uh, in the real world, Skyhawk 172, when you have your throttle fully aft, the, the engine still is still running. There's a throttle stop there. Um, so that's a bit of a weird behavior. And well, some of you suggested that that is because of this feature, reload the current aircraft. So now that we didn't use that feature just yet, let's see if we can start it up basic uh, idling uh, without that weird behavior. Um, hey Jim, good to see you. Good to see you. So, battery on. And uh, let's pretend that we also gonna prime the engine. I think it doesn't really matter that much. We don't have rep <laughs> installed just yet. Uh, fuel pump, pump, drain. And off. And spark and brakes are set. And let's start the engine. Boom. On. Generator on. There's the voltage. Idle. And it looks really, really stable. So, indeed, it has to do with that feature reload. Uh, current aircraft. So that's what we're going to see a couple of times here when we're going to reset some uh, settings in Playmaker and hop over back to, to explain that. Um, okay, there's nothing. Oh yeah, one thing that I'd like to do is assign flaps to my joystick. Because it seems that we have um, different notches here, but it's actually a variable flap indicator here. Um, so I think it might make sense to just use this one. Can we set flaps? Flaps up the notch. And that one is 40. Flaps down a notch. Down, 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 up, up, up. Good, um, okay, so there we are. Um, yeah, one other thing that I was also thinking about is X-Plane can actually present a lot of different information. Well, these are just data refs um, that you can bring up. I never used those before, but here you can see all of the different data refs that exist in X-Plane. I think that, that they are, this is a complete list, I would expect. Um, and so we need to be a little bit more careful um, or careful, there might also be instrument measurement error through our panels, panel instruments here. And that's why it's better just to read out these direct data, this direct data. Uh, and there's also all kinds of other data, for example, the angle of attack and all kinds of other stuff. And I know there are also graphs and other ways to present, specifically for developers, um, to visualize this information, which might also be very, very uh, helpful. Um, we got power, let me see, thrust, I don't need right now. We got RPM, we got power, we got indicated airspeed, also got calibrated airspeed, uh, this one. So indicated versus uh, calibrated. Well, well, it's not really calibrated, it's even, even more calibrated than calibrated. Um, well, that's power, I also don't need. Just propeller RPM, I do need engine power. Yeah, then we got uh, electrical. So bus one, bus two, how many amps we draw currently, and we only have one battery, so also have a look at that. Um, and I also like to see some other basic things. We also have instruments here, but why not just use the data refs. Um, for example, manifold pressure, fuel flow, exhaust, cylinder, oil pressure, oil temperature. Fuel, let's do fuel pressure as well. It's going to the other side, that's awesome. Um, and that's good for now, done. Okay, so two gallons, about two gallons of uh, per hour, manifold pressure, EGT. Um, and again, I guess I just need the instruments to know what actually what's actually green arc style. Uh, I don't know from the top of my mind. Oil pressure, <laughs> neither, also not with temperature. So these are nice numbers, but if I don't remember what the green arcs are, 
I have actually no idea. So oil temperature starting at 100 and oil pressure uh, starting at 50. Yeah, you can see the engine is slowly warming up, so that's also good. Good pressure also at idle. So uh, basics are still right. Um, and what I'd like to do, or test actually, are those visualizations. Um, let me see, show, how do I do that? Control. How do I do that? Projection parameters. No. Uh, so you can see the lift and drag vectors displayed right on top of your flight model. Um, and I know we can do that, but show projection, texture, sky colors, depth, air performance. And then we can perhaps go to... I know there's a... Keybind for that. Um, toggle visual clickable airports physical model visualization control M. That sounds familiar. Flight visualization toggle physics model visual control M. Control M it is. Control M. Yeah. So. Need to know there are different modes here. So here you can see the prop wash. Yeah, so here you can see that the prop is going down. You can see that the exhaust pipe as a miscellaneous body is now included in the flight model. So it's not just an object. It's a, so you can see that that works. And we can see a little bit of lift there. I don't think if you can call this lift though. Again, control M. What do we see here? You can see tiny little specks here. So those are thrust. Yeah, this is, yeah, you could say this is lift, I guess. And we don't see those here on the wings because there's no wind at all. Uh, so once, we are once, once we're flying, we'll see these kinds of um, marks also here on top of our wing. So this is currently, yeah. So if I now increase the RPM, yeah, you can see it's changing. And you can see there's also some lift there on the tail. Yeah, basic stability. Uh, interesting. Interesting, even a bit there. So this is a wing, miscellaneous wing. You can see that also gives us a little bit of a lift component. And also here, as you can see. Oh, interesting. What are those red marks? I think those red things are drag, I guess. Um, let me see. Interesting. But again, everything is interesting. You need to know what to look for. Uh, another control M. What is this? This is awesome that this is actually, that is exists in Playmaker, I think. So what is this? What could this be? Airflow? Oh, that's weird, airflow. What could that be? There are also all kinds of marks over here, as you can see. These dots, I don't know what they are doing. I'm not sure about this one. And control M, what is this? Whoa, feeling like we're warping. 
Okay, so I guess we need to cycle through these different views while we are in the air because then they might be a little bit more easy to understand. <laughs> um, okay, back into the cockpits. There we go. So let's first take off and do a basic traffic pair and see how she does. Uh, one notch of flap. There we go. A little bit of right rudder there. 40, 50, 60. Again, the yoke is... I'm not used to the yoke. There we go. Yeah, so my, my first intuitive observation, I should say, something like that, uh, is that the engine is too powerful. It feels too powerful. We, we Our takeoff distance is so short. All right, flaps up. Yeah, so can, we can notice that pitch down movement. Again, we need to look at that a little bit more in depth. All right, going up to 700. Still feels quite stable. And there we go. Fuel flow, 11 gallons. Cylinder had 24, oil pressure 78, oil temperature 173. Yeah, so it looks good. Fuel pressure, EGT. EGT is not, yeah, because we are not leaned. All right, 170. Downwind. Oh no. I guess we have. That should be runway 17, but there seems to be some kind of gyro drift here. Clearly. Alright, one notch of flaps. So again, the. You can see some drag there in the speeds with one notch of flaps. How much RPM? That's the only thing that I know. 2000 RPM. It's, it's, it seems to be not that far off. Let's run away 17. So clearly we got gyro drift. Okay. Finish. Cool. Yeah, it is. Hope you're doing well, Finish. All right. A little bit of power. Less power, I mean. So again, just flying a basic traffic pattern. I'm gonna also put my mic a little bit more in front of me. If you don't can't quite hear me, guys, let me know. Um, it's fun to just make a basic flight here. But we like to be precise, right? So as test pilots, we need to be much more academic about this. I mean, it's nice that it flies okay, but that's just the beginning. Um, the runway, oh, not your flaps. And I will also do a, a real world uh, flight in the 172 SP on my local airport soon at the beginning of March. I'm hoping. So we can actually so I have, to have a feel for the amount of pitch up behavior of putting down flaps and stuff and the drag and the bleed off of speed and stuff because there are no real numbers to get those full flaps i think there are full flaps right now no full flaps also my deflections here are quite well not minimal but it's too sensitive it, it, it doesn't feel that heavy, these Skyhawk. All 
Alright, but it feels quite stable and it does feel like a Skyhawk though, but... Who knows up? And it feels like a touchdown. Alright, flaps up. Looks good. And full power. Again, there's that left turning tendency, so a bit of right rudder. 25 RPM. 11 gallons per hour. Oil pressure and stuff. So how are we doing? Oil pressure is quite high. Oil temperature is gaining. Fuel flow, yeah, it's currently in the green arc. I think that with full power, uh, I'm, I remember that the fuel flow gauge should actually be um, outside of the green arc. Although that never made sense to me though. I mean, here's the fuel flow. So, let me see, does this work? I'm hoping that next plane is not too happy about me switching desktops. Uh, let me put that down. Um, fuel flow at max RPM in green. Click. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, so one thing we can do just for funsies is to visualize that flight model -y thing while we are flying. Just to have an idea of what those actually represent. While we climb. So, control M. Alright, so those are the white... Those white thingies, which do not differ that much from when we were on the ground. Ah, here you can see the lift component. Let's see what's happening. So you can see there's different, can you guys see? I guess you can see. Um, I think I should just lower this a bit. Especially when we were flying over the sea, I can show you guys a bit better from behind. Um, so you can see they're clearly different. You can see that X-Plane sees that there are two different wings, wing sections. Um, so you can see here this part is much flatter than this part. This is also a symmetrical wing section, right? It doesn't have any wing twists. It, it does have uh, an angle of incidence, um, but it's equal. So that, that makes sense. As you can see that second wing section, the wing tip from the middle wing root here to the wing tip, does have that wing twist. Um, and you can see it results in two different, um, in a different lift component. So yes, and you can see that each wing component, if I read this correctly, um, has a as its own drag components. So that's interesting. You can also get the wingtips that are little winglets that we made here. Also results in two A, also a separate, it's a separate component, separate station, has its own little lift component there. The struts also have their own, uh, because it's a wing, we said it as a miscellaneous wing. So I guess that's okay. Uh, and we also have a cabin, which I think is just a fuselage. So you can see that the fuselage itself has a wing, uh, a lift component, I guess. And also, what's that? What's that yellow? Side slip, I guess, and just drag. You guys can see, but which is quite extensive. Um, well, we see that prop wash here, reacting to the tail. So yeah, I can make sense of what we're seeing here. 
Um, the only thing, and, and again, it's the same thing that I was referring to earlier. Um, ah, that's the yellow. So it's just side slip or... Yeah, it's side slip. So we can have, as you can see that we have a little bit of a side slip. We have full throttle still. So if I lower the throttle, yeah, you can see that that side slip removes. So indeed that's prop wash style. At least I could, one thing I'm aware of is that we deliberately put the vertical stabilizer. I think it's realistic based on our sketches earlier. You can see that that vertical stabilizer here or that inner piece here is not completely aligned. It's a little bit off, has a little bit of an edge. And I believe that that's the case also in the real world because of compensating prop wash stuff. Uh, but perhaps that's a little bit due to tilt and the X-Plane doesn't fully understand, correctly understand what we try to do with that. Um, so this particular side slip component or turning be tendency, I don't know, might not be the not be caused or result or produced by just clean prop wash, but perhaps because we modeled the, our Skyhawk a little bit different uh, or incorrectly. But the fact that when I increase my throttle and lower my throttle or RPM, I can very directly manipulate that side slip tells me that it does relate to, but again, noob style, I don't know. So even if I'm not using rudder, you can see the yellow line. Nas, change to night. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, I don't have that set. Um, no, not settings, just flight. But isn't this fun? I think this is really cool. Um, so I still see what we're doing. Ah, that's much better. Uh, this is a bit too dark for me. <laughs> it's getting uh, quite alienated. Um, so let's do, I should really toggle some buttons there, but anyways. Finish, it's amazing how well it flies with just a default fly model. I imagine the number crunching the you have to do to get this right. Yeah, well, we took a lot of time to get the numbers right, but still their chances are that even though we have the numbers right, it could still fly, not that realistically, but to my feel, but it's just based off of a joystick, it, it feels like a Skyhawk. The only thing that I'm noticing is the engine is quite powerful, but I'm referencing that to the Laminar, the full 172, and the Airfall Labs, and not to a real world Skyhawk. So perhaps those guys are off. Wouldn't expect that that would be the case, but still, it could be. Now, another thing, I'm not, I'm, I'm, 100% sure that the wing wash here at the wingtip side is correct. We even calculated that with, with more advanced, well, not really advanced, but with our own math calculations. Um, but you can see that the biggest component of lift component is actually here in the middle, um, starting at that second section there, and it is a little bit less on this side. Uh, whether that's correct, well, it must be because I know that that, prop, that, that wing wash is uh, as precise as it can be. So that's fun. Um, control M. Welcome to the matrix. What do we see here, guys? Can someone give, give me an idea? So some kind of field. I see again red lines. So I perhaps they are consistent here and those mean drag. Yeah, there's drag by the main wheel and there's, or is it not main wheel? It looks like the main wheel, but the, or the nose wheel I mean, but the main wheels don't have a drag component, so. I also see different red lines here. Could this be airflow or the, the, the direction? No, let 
me change a thing. This one goes up, stays the same. I'm not sure what these vectors mean. It looks pretty though, but... I think that at least these are the different wing stations. So each wing station has its own ver vector slice. It's behind the wing. No, they are they are they are calculated. You can see all of these little dots here. They are also calculated here, but they are not present. Why are they not present there? But they are at the end. Let's lower our RPM. And that's full power RPM. I think that they are consistent with the colors. So I would say green again should be lift or th thrust. Red is drag. But there are different drag components for each station. It's a little bit confusing. And yellow is then side slip, but that's then the, whether we are going up or down, no. Yes, that's the direction that we're going to. Are we? Is that correct? I don't know. What's this? This is airflow. This is airflow. Ah, interesting. Um, um, yeah, so... So you can see there's a little bit of drag airflow or adverse drag, I guess. Uh, here, after the, behind the cabin, you can see a little bit of red, and I can, can show you guys. There's a little bit of red there, and also here, and here. So this is also, and this is angle of attack in a way. So up, yeah. You can see a lot of red lines here at the at the back when I instantly, more rapidly, pull on the yoke. Whoa. Down. Interesting. Okay, and control M. Okay, and then we're back. Okay, uh, nice as visualizations, but um, again, lacking uh, knowledge uh, there. Control, oh no, Alt W, there we are. Okay, so um, let's return to basic uh, procedures uh, here. Um, 2300 RPM, flaps up, I hope, no, they're up now, yes. So first basic cruise tests. I should also actually, is this trim? Oh my gosh. Uh, boom. That's not the right trim setting. Uh, joystick. It's important that we trim before we evaluate what our airplane is doing. Um, I thought I set trim here, pitch trim down, but it's such a rapid notch. Pitch trim down, yeah. Looks good though. Mm, is there another way? A more subtle way to do the trim? Because these are incremental changes in trim, which are much too big. No. Okay, let's leave, let's leave it then as uh, neutral. Um, but I should look into that. Um, so, 2300 RPM. Is 
steady flight. Going a little bit up. You can see that my neutral um, sending of the yoke is not really that neutral. Always messing those up. Uh, just resume flight. Uh, joystick calibrate. Let's see if we can still do this. So, 2300 RPM. We're slowly going up, so let's just do a little bit of manual pitch down then. Which is not ideal. I wish I could just use keyboards. Trim, trim is important. Um, what I could also do is. Um, use the autopilot perhaps and do it like that although then it's compensating all of the time and that's not what I'm interested in uh, damn it trim shouldn't be that hard um, keyboards trim just incremental trim Trim up, trim down, okay. Oh, look at those jumps. Shift that, is that slower? Control. That's a bummer. I mean, with my trim wheel, I can be much more precise with trimming, but I guess in default X-Plane that cannot be done? I cannot imagine that that's the case. All right, um, then we'll, uh, again, do it by hand as best as we can. So, let me see. Let's go to basic cruise, let's say 2300 RPM. Let's see what it does. Speed is 93, slowly increasing. Airplane wants to go up. We said our maneuvering speed is, I think is 105 and our design speed, I think was 115. And again, these different speeds, these are performance kind of, uh, performance stable flights, but I just like to see just an initial feel for what it's doing. So you can see around 100, that's not too bad, not too far off from uh, what I would expect. And now we're descending a bit. So, now it goes up. Um, yeah. Um, figure out how to set subtle trim. Just trim, uh, just the trim speed and playmaker. Ah. That could be. Roger, 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 and Z. So that's why I thought it was just default X plane, but it's obviously air, aircraft specific. Well, that's the first thing that I'm gonna change then. Um, let me just turn this airplane around. I remember some elevator trim settings, indeed.
pause, click, and playmaker. Uh, standard, let me see. Control geometry. Trim and speed. All moving stabilizer. Controls, let me see. Rudder elevator, just plain old elevator. Yeah, this is all stuff that we still need to look at. Drag rudder ratio. Tip of the control. This is also something that I didn't set. Um, just still to do. Uh, control geometry. Totally overlooked that one. A uh, drag rudder chords ratio. Uh, yeah, but now I'm interested in trim. Trim speed. All moving stabilizer. Trim trading edge down, then up degree. Surface effects. Right away. Haven't we set those? We only set the basic elevator. I thought we also set the elevator trim. Um, okay. Apparently we did not. One seventy two Q, one seventy two Q, 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 R, 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 S. Elevator tab. Up 22, down 90. And this are our degrees, right? We don't get a hover. I think so. Degrees, surface reflection, elevator, or stabilizer. Stabilizer, stabilizer trim, training, edge, down, then up. Yeah, so down is 19. And up is 22. Okay, we'll have to see. And elevator rim surface then up. Now here I did set a degree surface of elevator. All moving stabilizer trim. Elevator trim surface. Hmm. Why is it 13? That's weird. Elevator trim. Well, this is wrong. Um, all moving stabilizer. But well, we don't have an all moving stabilizer. We only have an elevator trim. Degree service reflection elevator. Or stabilizer. Stay we are. The center one is for full down. Is for full up elevator. Yes, perhaps I shouldn't do this. Indeed, this is the when the entire horizontal stabilizer is moving, and that's not the case. We only have a trim surface, so let's just keep it there. But let's elevator trim full down deflection seconds from center to either extreme. Um, yeah, I have that on the video. Let me just put it in right now. I don't have it here on my desktop, unfortunately, so I only have it on my phone still. Let me see. Uh, videos. And I think it's going to be that one. Okay. 
it's this one okay and then all the way back 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 flaps time hmm, that's a bit weird again I thought I I thought I had it but Cabin air, blah 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 blah, flaps. Okay, apparently that's not the video. And this is the oil cap. Then let's try this one. That's rudder deflection. That's also not it. Come on. Apparently, I don't have it here on my phone. Um, I believe it's gonna be around... Let's put it at five. And increments, tap adjust. One is the total elevator trim reflection. So this is gonna be tiny. Um, Let's put it at 10. Let's see what's going to happen. A takeoff trim, I don't care. So, boom, save. Let's go to X plane, click. Uh, reload current aircraft. Again, you might have all kinds of weird behavior now. Um, pause, there we go. What is our engine doing? Yeah, it's fine. It's just an idle. Uh, okay, let's see what trim is doing now. Yes, that's much better. And nose up. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can trim it. Uh, so steady speed. 2300. Something like this. It doesn't really matter that much. Perhaps it should even be more subtle than this. And just one click. Already gives me quite a change um, oh, 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 oh be careful ah oh, damn it I forgot again so every time I do that once I'm still in x-plane and I'm using my desktop switching my desktop then my mouse cursor disappears and that's not helpful uh, standard control geometry so let's make that just one uh, and save okay Hey Giggles, good to see you. Testing um, our Skyhawk here with more advanced in-air test lights. Just figuring out trim here, because apparently I didn't set it. It should be right now. Uh, yes, do we have engine running? No, but we can very quickly. Whoop, batteries on, generator on. Click and start. There we are. And we can go up. Let's see how it falls down. Um, M, I think. Is that M? Yes, it is. Altitude. Something like this. Whoa! There we are. Uh, okay, a bit of power. 23. Uh, okay, and now let's see how the tuning does. 
Oh, it's still quite reactive, to be honest. So... If I just keep it like this, and even though we're not really trimmed, you can see that there is a tendency to make that left turn, right? Well, we're currently at 2300. Again, there should be a tendency for the aircraft to... Yeah, so at, this, at, at the one hand, you like it to have some kind of stability. Um... But at the same time, I know that because of high RPM, we have this left turning tendency. But shouldn't it be that, should it be that extreme? Seems a bit too much though. I think we don't see that nice dusk, perhaps because of my settings here. Let me see if we can explain that tendency. So you can see there's the tendency for the left turn. We are descending right now. If I look at the lift components, you can see that there's a bit more lift on this side. That's because of the wing. Uh, of the prop washing over, I think. There's some lift there that we don't see there. And those want to go down. How can we explain that tendency? The one big, I mean, we can also look at, these are tiny differences here on top. There's a little bit more power there. Usually the shape is kind of like the same. So the one thing that I would suggest that is making this turn is actually this. You're at the struts. This is quite extreme. Even though we know that this is not a symmetrical airflow because obviously this is going around the aircraft more power full power and goes up and no power well that might be a test then um, Still, we have that same. So it's not prop wash. And again, that, that left turn tendency might be correct, but it seems a bit too much to me. Again, this is something that I also need to test in, uh, in real life. I have some real world footage, video footage that I can compare it to. Up, down, up. So you can see that strut. Look at that strut. Why does it also have four different sectors? So, pause. Click outside of explain, and then we're gonna do that. Oh, 
it's still in the same. Uh, yeah, that might also be a way to do it, actually. Um, so, yes, what's different about this strut? Did we make that with miscellaneous wings? I think we have. Well, thank you. Congratulations on playing Airborne. Yeah, it's awesome. But now the real complexity starts. The real thinking starts. Um, let me see. Yeah, this is that strut. 45. And this is the other one. Ah! Look at that. We've got different stations. Five stations there and only one station there, which explains why we only see one vector. Um... And the dihedral is also a bit different, which is, ex what we, we did it according to the sketches. We also know that this wing is, in terms of dihedral, it's a little bit more of a dihedral than the other wing. So I'm not too concerned that these numbers here um, are off. The length is also a bit different. So let's just first make five stations here. Yes. Save, back into Playmaker, develop, reload, shift four, pause, much better, but you can see, well, no, it's actually better, this is actually better. Okay, um, Control-Alt-W. Oh, the prop is still running. Oh, because we reloaded it, yes. Um, yeah, and then, fly. let's make a little bit more daylight. 